Glenn's going to present a, a talk on digitizing, di let's see, establishing and digitizing small, quote unquote, small herbaria. So Allison referred to the range of, of sizes and we are doing our best in Northern California to get all of our tiny herbaria digitized and Sierra Pacific Industries has stepped out ahead of the curve to actually do it. So he's going to describe how that happened. Then. safe. <laughs> well, since we have a, a little bit of time and she mentioned the, the story, well, we were working on the um, Huckleberry project. I, I've done a, quite a few collections um, over a number of years, and um, yes, I did do collections, did a pretty nice job, I thought, but I just couldn't deal with the numbering. I have too many things in my brain as it is, and so I was sans nombre for a long, long time. So we went down to um, Cal Academy and uh, was doing, we're doing a bunch of work there and uh, ran into Jim down there. And um, long, uh, after that visit, he had um, stumbled across some of our, was interested and looked at our records because at the time we were doing all the, the Huckleberry work. So he sent Julie um, an eloquently written email chewing my ass for not having the, the collection numbers and explain very well how the, they link to the specimens and, and all, all the things that they do. So I went, she forwarded it to me and I went, okay. So I forget the name of that date, I have to go back and look, but whatever date that was, December something, I made a numeric of that date and the very next collection was the numeric of that date and plus one. So since then, so I don't really have 20,000 collections, but um, numbers can be whatever they want. So that's, that's how it all started. So it's always a reminder to me. Um, anyway, so again, thanks, uh, thanks for having me and I don't need to be redacted. So we're okay there and, and what else? Um, and based on some news I heard this morning, I'm also not filing for bankruptcy. So we're, we're good all the way around so far. My, my part of our, uh, our small herbarium session is going to be to talk about establish, establishing and digitizing small herbaria. So I'll go over the importance of small herbaria and even uh, small collections. So you know, if you want to consider the, the herbaria, it suggests a little formality, but it could also just be um, small collections how to formally establish a small herbaria, and then uh, generally I'll describe the process to digitize and accession specimens online. And then um, I'd like to just quickly sum up by reviewing um, what we feel are some benefits of um, establishing and maintaining a small herbaria. So uh, the term for small herbaria, um, they're, they're often typically something that would be regional in scope. So we're talking about the local BLM office or the local Forest Service District office, at least when they're open. Uh, you know, it could be a, a land, a timber management company that works in a, in a particular ownership over a number of years, a consulting company that has focused work in an area. So highly regionalized work and typically over, um, you know, length, lengths of time. However, their condition, they are valuable sources of, of local information. You'll often run into a lot of uh, unduplicated or uncommon specimens and <coughs> connecting back to that regional scope, lots of intense local sampling because you have people working in the same area over and over and over and you tend to collect a lot of the same stuff. I, I know I have boxes of things that, um, you know, you send a few off to the larger area, but just with time and cost and whatever, you end up with, you know, two or three times as many just at, at, at your side. So with all that, there. They're tremendous sources of information, they certainly could be. 
So with that, um, of course, there's issues associated with that. You know, these are not super formal places, many of them. And um, you know, most of the issues have to deal with, with access. Just even trying to figure out what's, what's in these things to begin with. And if you can figure that out, uh, issues associated with time, uh, you know, the scattered geographic locations, um, the, the collections have at best limited maintenance, if anything, and um, you know, limited staff as well. So there become challenges with just trying to get at some of this data. So we've established briefly here that these small herbaria are awesome and that there's some issues about you know, getting the information out of them. So what are we going to do? Well, there's some new processes in place, or relatively new anymore. What we can do is establish a formal small herbaria and then also a session and provide that information online. So the first step is going to be to register with Index Herbari, Herbari. Boy, this, this one, Allison got it perfect, but I've had struggles with this one, with Herbarium. And that project dates back to the 30s, where it's, and it's managed by the New York Botanical Gardens. It's basically a guide to all the Herbaria worldwide. So you go online and provide basic information, you know, the, what's, what's um, in your description, in the collection, contact information, and so on. The key is that it has to be managed, at least at some level, and then um, accessible to the scientific community. So you'll complete a brief 24 page form <laughs> and um, submit basically all the minutiae behind some of these general categories I've listed, and um, that gets reviewed by the project. And when you hear back from the project editor, then you are an official herbarium. So that's, um, well, once you become an official herbarium, all these little codes that we're used to seeing, so CHSE for Chico, for example, that your index code, this registration process is where that comes from. So the next step would be to register with the North American Network of Small Herbaria, or I'll just refer to that as NANCH. NANCH is, uh, it's a bummer that Steve's not here because he would be way better equipped to explain all this than, than I am, but NANCH is underneath the uh, regional data portals under SciNet, and SciNet is underneath Symbiota. All these things connect to each other. Frankly, it's kind of confusing, but I, I stuck all these in here because to at least demonstrate be familiar with the terms because when you work with NANCH, you're going to see these terms. But the bottom line is for your small herbaria, you'll be working um, through NANCH. <laughs> so the first step, if you want to uh, begin this process after you've registered and you're official, well, it's like Allison said, it all starts with uh, specimens. So you're going to prepare your specimens as you typically would, uh, the label information, the records that go along with that, all the um, ID work you may need to do, the, the difference for certainly for connecting to the digital world that uh, might be different than uh, just a standard specimen is uh, you will use a unique barcode identifier that's going to link the record and the specimen to uh, digital imagery. So once you're done with all your specimens, or if you already have a stack of specimens and you're pretty much ready to go, you probably are just going to be skipping to the barcode step of, of this process. There we go. So once you're done with all your specimens and you are wanting to prepare digital imagery of, of your specimens, you're going to use what's generally referred to as a digitizing station. And it's basically a museum quality archival camera setup that has some kind of copy stand and base, um, some specialized lighting. You'll have computers set up and software and um, some digital storage, of course. And there's many, well, I shouldn't say many, but there's several types of these uh, digitizing stations out there to use. The one we own at Sierra Pacific, for example, is referred to or called a copy stand. And it's built, ours is built by the Kaiser Company, and then the, the copy stand refers to the base here, so that's where the specimen lays, 
and sorry, gotta get for me. There we go. We can't even see that. Is, can anyone even see the pointer? Yeah. Okay, so this is where the specimen's laid. And then we have up here is a part set is a Nikon lens and camera system, so that and the type of lens is, is appropriate for this type of application. The specialized lighting, and then of course you'll hook up a computer and um, have software to make all these things work together. So our process it, using that setup is basically we set up an assembly line, thank you, and um, the images are, um, you'll set up your specimen in the copy stand here. So we've got all this hooked up, the camera, a barcode scanner, and the computer, and we're going to call up our, our um, specimen database, which is in a type of a spreadsheet format. Ours is in Access. Um, you'll want to have it in Excel to upload onto NANCH. But you'll call up your specimen database, select the record, then you'll take the image using the, some of the fine tuning that the software allows you to do with the lighting and, and focusing. Take the image, then scan with the barcode, and then, of course, that links the image to the record to the specimen. I'll save that as a file, move on to the next one, and before you know it, you've got a whole pile of them ready to go. Got a quick trigger. So, the, uh, as I mentioned, there's several kinds of these uh, digitizing stations out there, this photo box style, where the lighting's contained all within the, within the box, and there's windows for where the camera would be taking the pictures. And this real slick setup that this particular company is advertising where they can do digital scans, high quality digital scans, and then they're, they're uh, advertising a software package that goes with that to help you do your work. So just, uh, I, know, I know from our records, we spent roughly 5,000-ish dollars on our copy stand. Um, I understand on these photo box things, it's, it's roughly the same once you get all the pieces together you need. Um, online, I noticed that digital scanner was 10, 12, 13,000, so quite a bit more, but it looks really slick. So however you do it, uh, once you're all ready with your files, you're going to go to your, because now of course you've been registered with Nanch, so you go to your home page, there'll be control panels, and you can enter, start entering your data um, right from your, from your computer. The uh, label information can be entered using um, some of the templates provided, or you can just literally just enter the label itself from the scanned image. And remember, the barcodes are going to link all these things together. There's um, a nice feature that you can upload in, in batches. And then also the overall systems, so here's our symbiotic term. There's some quality control checks, so if things are out of place, you'll, you'll get a message. And there's also this really slick map server function, so for georeferenced records, You'll be able to uh, keep the geotags for you. Okay, so you've registered on Nanch. Now you drop in a bunch of specimens. Now you're really on Nanch. So this is a, just a screenshot of the current participants. So if I zoomed in a little bit closer on that, you'll see a couple of local groups. There's Ready BLM and um, Aaron up at the Klamath National Forest. Um, and here we are down here at Sierra Pacific Forestry or SPIF. So. I think we'd be out pretty good on our code. Um, so this information's uh, available on the NANCH website, and also through SIGNET, which would then ring to, to regional portals. And then also um, SIGNET links to the Consortium of California Group, right, which most all of us are probably used to seeing. So if you go down to the bottom of the, the sources, and here's SIGNET here, so in theory, uh, you'll be searching, you know, the Cyanet folks when you're when you're on this page too. I actually couldn't make that work the other day. It sounds like there's some things going on we can learn about later today to see how all this is connecting. But anyway, this is um, this is what's uh, what it's looking like today. <clears throat> so going back to the Nanch um, page, if you select it on one of the participants, so here I selected on Spiff. You'll get the basics of what's in the collection and some, um, some general statistics. So you can see, for example, right now we're sitting at 355 specimens in our collection. 
And um, so if I was to go ahead and click on, sorry, this flicker and pointer are separate, the, um, this show geographic distribution tab, it's gonna, it's gonna show now that all of our 355 collections are from California, which makes total sense because that's where we're doing our work. So if I click on that link, up come the results. So this is literally all of our um, collections, starting alphabetically with our Adiantum Shastens or Shasta Basin Hair Fern. There is also ways you can search by using the um, uh, species list tab, or as I mentioned, this uh, map tab is really cool. So there's a couple different ways you can get and sort sort through some of the stuff. Another real simple way is just from the Nancho page itself is just to enter your species name here, and you can either do this um, for all participants or selected participants. So if I enter Daddy Adam Shastens in that box, I'm going to get the results page here. Um, and so you'll notice that this is just a, a screenshot at the top of the results. There's a few more, but you'll notice there's one, two, three participants with, that happen to have Daddy Adam Shastens specimens. So this little picture that goes along with these here and here tell you that there's a scanned image with that record. So you notice the RSA ones do not have the scanned image, but the information is still there. So I, I point this out because I know we get caught up in the digitizing and it's cool and sexy and all that, but kind of a bigger point here is you can still do this, participate, register, do all these things, and not deal with the a digital imagery, you can get that information out there anyway. Uh, also, you can, um, because of the barcodes, you can always go back and do the imagery later. So I, I just want to make sure that um, we don't leave here thinking well, we have to do all this digitizing. It, it, again, it's really, really cool, but you can get your collections or herbaria where people can more readily access them uh, through the same process without doing the digitizing. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that map tab. So, this is a screenshot of literally, it's all the map tab will just show all of those 355, or we have some number short of that of the geo referenced um, uh, collections. But all the geo referenced collections will pop up. So, this is an uh, area that's just north and east of Reading. And you'll see, so if I was to select on this top one on my computer, then that record's going to pop up. It again happens to be a chest dense, and you can review all the label information. There's another tab here that is it also says map, but it, it'll pull up a much more detailed map. And of course, you can click on the image itself and um, you know check out the, the specimen. And for those, um, let's do a show of hands who's seen digital herbarium specimens. Probably pretty much, well, there's still a few. Yeah, they're really, really. It's, it's amazing because remember, the, the, these good setups are the museum quality, so you've got really good um, gear to take this imagery with. And um, so what you'll end up with to begin with is you'll, you'll see, usually you'll, when you hit the file, you'll get the entire image, and then you have the ability to then scroll around and zoom into some of the details and stuff. So if you've collected good specimens and prepared good specimens to begin with, You've got the good equipment to get them digital. It's it's really a lot of detail. It's, it really is amazing. <clears throat> so the other thing that Nanch provides is the ability to curate the small herbaria from your desktop. You'll have a, a home page with control panels. So if we hit the the uh, management control panels, you've got editorial, administrative functions that you can do right right from your computer. Um, do all kinds of things with records, editing, make batch determinations if there is a name change, manage loans if you choose to go that route. Uh, you can post a comments so users of Nash are allowed to comment on specimens. So you can then view those and uh, respond appropriately if you need to. Um, manage permissions on your account. There's all kinds of things you can do. So um, switching gears a little bit, I, I think there's just a lot of things that come along with um, setting up and managing a small herbarium. The obvious thing is it provides 
you know, that could provide anyway, a great deal of useful information um, and getting, you know, getting that dusty box in the closet out to where people can, can actually look at some of the information that they contain. Uh, we feel that it adds credibility to our botany program. It helps with some public transparency and provides a resource. It's a great way to collaborate and a reference source both uh, internally and externally. We've, we find it, we're using it ourselves because it's easier to go to our, to go to Nantes and look at our specimens than it is to drive across the compound and look in the, where their specimens are stored. Um, the other, and the other thing I noticed too is just, just collections in general, and certainly with this digitizing process, it just, it, there's a lot of steps, there's a lot of detail, and it, just doing this just gives you heightened awareness about how all these steps come together. So it makes for better field work, a better filing, a better organization. So at the end of the day, fewer mistakes, which is always a good thing. It also generates a lot of interest with our staff, and we feel that it helps with recruiting efforts as well. So to wrap this up, I think we're okay on time. Thank you. Um, you know, I think that these small library are really important information sources. And um, they're, they're relatively easy to establish. It still takes a great deal of time, but there's, there's things in place now that make it a little less painful. And remember, you can assess those specimens online with digital images and just the records, and then also the uh, multiple benefits that, that I just mentioned. So with that, um, I'd like to thank Jennifer Poor, who spent a lot of time working through our herbarium, and working on some of the kinks for the um, our camp copy stand system. Tom uh, Ingster, my predecessor, Dean, helps us and continues to do so. The rest of our botany staff and Aaron up at the Clemish and the Forest, she actually was the first one to use our copy stand system and work out some of the bugs for us. And then the symposium committee for, for inviting us. And with that, I think we do have some time for some questions.